Everybody, my name is Casey Jordan, and I am so glad you're joining me for the final day of Bolt VBS. So far, we've had some cup grabbing, sponge soaking fun, but today's game might just be the wackiest of them all. Today, we're gonna be catching fish, but instead of using a fishing pole, you'll be using your face. Before we get started though, I have a little challenge for you. It's called the shell game. In just a second, you're going to see three cups. One of the cups will have a ball underneath it. Follow that cup as closely as you can. When you see the cup stop moving, see if you can guess which cup has the ball underneath. Are you ready? Follow the cup with the ball closely. Did you get it right? That was pretty tough. In order to win that challenge, you had to follow the cup closely. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what it would be like if we followed Jesus that closely. And the best part about Jesus is that he's not zipping around trying to lose you like that cup did. With that said, I think we should get started with our first game. So come on, let's bolt. Welcome everybody to BSTN, Bolt Sports Television Network. My name is David Rausch and this is my co-anchor, Tim the T-Rex Woodrum. Tim, why do they call you T-Rex? Well, David, once again, they don't. But wait, actually I kind of like that name. They call me T-Rex because of my fierce personality. Or is it because of my short arms? And another big welcome to our viewers at home. Thank you for joining us for today's broadcast of Fishy Face, the sport that has struck the world. It sure has, David. Fishy Face is a sport of precision striking. So to help us understand what it takes to become a champion at this sport, I reached out for an exclusive interview with the king of precision striking, a cobra. You mean his nickname is Cobra? That's awesome. No, David, I mean he is a cobra. His name is Gary. Come on, Tim. We're not doing this again. You're just gonna play some ridiculous video of a snake and pretend like it's talking to you. Video? No, Gary is actually right here. Wait. You mean you're going to do an in-person interview with a poisonous cobra? Well, David, it won't be an in-person interview because Gary isn't a person. I guess it'll be an in-snake interview. This is normally Gary's nap time. I think he's a little more cranky than usual. Ah! All right, athletes, you all know how this game works. One person from each team is going to put whip topping on their face. The other members of the team are gonna race back and forth collecting one goldfish cracker at a time and running back and attaching it to the face of their teammate. The team that has the most goldfish attached at the end of one minute wins. Do you understand the rules? Yes, ma'am! Perfect, athletes, let's get in position. Good, 
All right, team's time is up. Let's start counting. Team one, one, two, <laughs> nine, 10, and 11. Woo! All right, team I two. I dropped three. You dropped three? All right. One, two, 16, 17, and the winning team is team two! Yes! Woo! Congratulations, team two! Well done, well done. Yeah. That was truly a battle of champions. And now, for those of you watching at home, it's your turn to play. That's right, Tim. When I say so, press pause on the video. Then play as many rounds of Fishy Face as you would like. But when you're finished, don't rest just yet, because there are even more games for you to play. When all of the games are finished, grab a snack, open your Bibles to the verses on the screen, and read them together. After that, press play again and join us in progress. Are you ready? It's time to bolt in three, two, one. Press pause. Oh, hey, good to see you again. I see you shaved your fish beard. Was that an accident or did you do that on purpose? Anyway, I hope your fishy face game was better than my joke. And I hope you caught a lot of fish too. That actually reminds me of today's Bible story. In today's true story, there's some guys who caught a ton of fish, but I don't think they used their face. In the Bible, in Luke 5, Jesus got into a boat with a man named Simon, who was also called Peter. Jesus said to Peter, go out into the deep water, then let your nets down so you can catch some fish. Peter wasn't so sure though. He said, we've been fishing there all night and haven't caught a thing. But if you say so, Jesus, I'll do it. So he did. Peter rowed his boat further out and then threw his nets into the water. And when he began to pull them back into the boat, they were full of fish. Not just a few fish, not just enough fish to cover your face. There were actually so many fish that the nets started breaking. Peter had to think fast. So he called out to his friends, James and John, who were in another boat. Together, the three of them pulled in enough fish to fill both boats. In fact, the boats were both so full of fish that they started to sink. It was a miracle. Everyone was amazed at the number of fish they'd caught. Peter knew right then that Jesus was no ordinary man. So he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Lord, I am not even worthy to be around you. I'm a sinful man. Jesus said to Peter, come on, follow me, and I will make you a fisher of men. So right then and there, Peter, James, and John left their boats and their nets and the lives they had always known, and they followed Jesus wherever he went. They were the first disciples that Jesus would ever have, but not the last. Later, Jesus had dinner with a tax collector named Matthew. Tax collectors, blah! Nobody liked them. A lot of them would steal people's money. So when the Pharisees saw who Jesus was hanging out with, they were like, why are you eating and drinking with people like Matthew? But Jesus didn't care what they thought. He wasn't looking for the most popular people. So he said to Matthew, follow me. And just like Peter and his friends, Matthew left everything behind and followed Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we're down to the grand finale. Welcome to the BSTN coverage of professional indoor origami. Today is the third and final day of origami action. Tim, does it get any better than this? 
It sure doesn't, David, and I say that as an expert in the industry. I actually used to make a living off of this until my origami business folded. But that's okay, it required too much paperwork anyway. Riveting stuff as always, Tim. So it comes down to this, folks. This moment has the level of intensity that the Super Bowl, World Series, and Stanley Cup can only dream of. Our origami athlete is going to attempt to create a paper heart out of a single piece of square paper. Now, viewers at home, remember that you too can participate in the origami action. For today's event, you'll need a square piece of paper. It can be any color, including white. That's right, David, viewers at home, see if you can keep up with today's athletes. But if at any time you need to pause or rewind the video, including right now, don't hesitate to do so. Well, Tim, one last time. It looks like the action is about to begin. Let's go courtside to see the origami action unfold. Today, we are joining origami superstar Hans Handerson for one last performance. David, there's something I've wanted to tell you for a while, but it's just difficult for me to say. Go ahead, Tim. This is a safe place. Okay, here it is. Hans Handerson has some of the most handsome hands on this side of Hanover. Wow. Tim, you're right, that was difficult to say. Hans folds the paper corner to corner to form a triangle. Then he opens it back up to reveal a center line. Now he folds the paper corner to corner in the other direction. And he flattens that edge down nicely. Unfolds it again to reveal a cross pattern. Corner to midpoint. Classic move. You can tell he really knows what he's doing. Something I can rarely ever relate to. I have no comment. Interesting approach as he now prepares to execute a fold across the other way. And he sticks the landing. A perfect 10. You know, David, why does 10 think it's so perfect? 11 is better than 10. Those are some deep thoughts, Tim. Hans folds the bottom corner to the top middle of the paper. And he smooths that edge down nicely. He grabs the other corner and does the same thing. And the heart seems to be taking shape now. Get your hot dogs! Get your corn dogs! Oh, look at that! As he flips it over, it almost resembles a fox head. What does the fox say? Am I right, kids? Let's not bring that back, Tim. Very interesting tactics as he folds the top two corners down. Then he turns the paper. He folds one more corner down. He turns it again. Then he folds the last corner down. I don't know about you, but I am giddy with anticipation. And would you look at that? Hans Handerson has pulled off a perfectly sculpted heart. I think I speak for all of us when I say, I heart Hans Henderson. Don't we all, Tim? Don't we all? And there you have it, folks. Thank you for joining us for the season finale of Professional Indoor Origami. And for one last time, Tim and I would like to say to the viewers at home, happy folding, friends. Were any of you surprised by who Jesus picked to be his disciples? Jesus could have chosen anyone he wanted, the smartest, the richest, or the most popular. Instead, he chose ordinary people to follow him. Did you know that Jesus is still asking people to follow him? And guess what? He wants you. It's true, Jesus wants you to follow him. He doesn't care that you're not the tallest kid around or the smartest kid or, or the most popular kid. He doesn't even care that you're not perfect. 
Do you know what Jesus cares about? He cares about your heart. Jesus is looking for people who love him and want to make him the most important thing in their life. Jesus loves you so much. In fact, his love for you is so great that he died on a cross for your sins. He gave up his life on earth so that you could have life with him forever in heaven. And when you say yes to following Jesus, nothing can ever separate you from his love. That actually reminds me of our Bible verse for today. Say this with me. Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 39. Nice job. Let's do it again, but this time some of the words are going to disappear. Say it with me again. Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 39. That was really good. Let's do it again, but this time even more words are going to disappear and you're going to say it without me. Are you ready? Go ahead and say it. It's getting a bit harder, isn't it? Do it again now with even fewer words. All right, let's do it one more time, but this time all of the words are going to disappear. Are you ready? Give it a try. Nice job! That was our hardest verse yet. And you know, it makes me think of a question. After I ask the question, I want you to pause the video and talk about it with the people around you. When you're finished, you can press play again. Okay, here's my question. Have you ever said yes to following Jesus? If so, tell about it. If not, do you wanna do it now? Pause and discuss. Welcome back. I hope you had some great conversations. Saying yes to following Jesus is as easy as A, B, C. Let me explain what I mean by that. The A stands for admit. If you wanna follow Jesus, you have to admit that you sin and ask God for forgiveness. God loves you so much, he'll forgive you no matter how much you've sinned. The B stands for believe. If you wanna follow Jesus, you have to believe that Jesus died for your sins. When we believe that Jesus died for our sins, we can be forgiven. And finally, the C stands for confess. If you wanna follow Jesus, you have to confess or declare your faith in Jesus. Admit, believe, confess. If you've never done that before and you want to, you can do it right now on your own. Or if you want help, Talk to your parents or talk to one of your leaders at church. Following Jesus is the best decision you could ever make. Hey kids, I'm Ben Calhoun from Citizen Way and we are on day three of VBS Awesomeness. Woo! Holla, holla. Okay, day one, we talked about bulletproof, the armor of God, Ephesians 6, and also Psalm 119, 105 that says, His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We can 
totally listen to Jesus with both of our ears. <laughs> we only have one mouth and two ears. And day two, we talked about wave walker, walking on the waves like Peter did following Jesus, supernaturally walking on the water. I believe it. And that's how we can focus on Jesus, okay? If we keep our eyes on him, we can walk on the water. And day three is all about we can follow Jesus. And you know what? I chose to follow Jesus when I was a kid. You know, I went to church. I loved it. But going to church makes you as much of a Christian as going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. Every person is given the choice to follow God themselves. Not by any other means. You have the choice. And I made that choice when I was a kid. You know why? My parents loved me. They loved me enough to give me a choice to love them back. And that's what real love is. You see, 1 John chapter 4 says we love because he first loved us. Our God loves us and he loves you right where you are, enough to send his son Jesus, not only to pay for our sin and your sin and mine, but also to pay for every sin there ever was. And everything the enemy ever did, he is going to redeem someday. And that is something to look forward to. I'm so glad I'm part of the family of God. And you can be too. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, it's very simple. Lord, you can pray with me now. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only way, the truth, and the life. Forgive me for my sin. I want to make you the Lord of my life and follow you all of my days. In your name I pray. Amen. That's all it takes. And if you did that today, or if you've done it recently, or maybe someday you will, well, you're going to be welcomed into the biggest family there ever was, the family of God. In Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 28 says that nothing can separate us from his love. Nothing. In fact, I wrote a song about it. It goes like this. Oh, all right. Here we go. I'm going to teach it to you. I got to get the words going here, though. I wrote this so many years ago, right from Scripture.
guys, thank you so much for being with me today. I'm Ben Calhoun from Citizen Way. Three days of awesomeness here at VBS. Man, I'm glad to be with you. In Jesus' name, see you soon. It's true. Nothing ever could separate us from the love of God that is shown to us through Jesus. When we listen to Jesus and focus on Jesus and follow Jesus, we have the promise of life with him forever in heaven. Well, that's it. Bolt VBS is over, but the mission isn't. That's because Jesus has called you to be his follower. And my prayer is that you say yes to him today, tomorrow, and every day of your life. Thanks for joining us. Bye, everybody.